as I'm constantly saying with these etudes, I think it's great if you can look at it and figure out what Altez had in mind for his students to do. I think there are clues here that make it really clear what he's after in this etude. If you look at the 16th notes, the texture of the notes, how they keep going up and down, back and forth. If you look at the tempo, there are a lot of little clues. So I'm going to give you the chance to pause the video and try to figure it out if you haven't already. And now we're going to be post pause and I'm going to tell you. And in fact, there's a main goal, but there's a goal leading up to it as well. It's like if we're in a video game and there's level one and level two. So level one, the goal is to play everything as evenly and perfectly cleanly as possible. If we move on to level two, the real goal is this is a trilling exercise. I have no doubt. And like all of the best trill exercises, it is measured. It's very disciplined and organized. You have to trill an exact number of times. That gives you a lot more control over your trills when you put them in music. And if you play it at the indicated tempo of quarter note equals 168, 16th notes at that tempo do sound like trills. So we really get to the point that this etude becomes a big trill study. But now, the reason I've been talking about first and second goals is I'm going to tell you a big secret. It's a secret because some of my current and former students, I may have had them do this study and I never even let them use trill fingerings. So the big secret is that Altez wanted you to use alternate and trill fingerings in this. He puts a title at the top in his complete method, which we never see because we're using the selected studies. But in his complete method, he says, basically, this is for the use of trill fingerings to facilitate the execution. So he's telling you to use trill fingerings. So my students are going to be upset with me, but here's the deal. If you reach the first goal, you're on level one and you're using real fingerings and you get it all even and clean. I only ever let my students use trill fingerings when we are going fast enough to need them. Because when you use trill fingerings, the pitch suffers and I'd rather use real fingerings. I fight using trill fingerings all the time myself unless my brain steps in and says, look, this is going to be cleaner. It's going to work better if you simply break down and use the trill fingering. So if a student comes in and plays this etude at say quarter note equals 112, which is a pretty respectable speed, I am not going to let them use trill fingerings because it doesn't sound like trills. But if a student were to come in and say, I'm trying to get this faster and faster, I've got it up to about 144, but I find at this speed, I can't go faster and stay clean unless I start to use trill fingerings. Will you allow me to use trill fingerings? <laughs> then I will say, gold star on your forehead, blessings upon you for trying to reach full tempo, and yes, go ahead and use trill fingerings. So there is my justification. Going along with the trill and alternate finger concept, there's a whole section in here where in the complete method, Altez has marked to leave your right hand second finger down. That is a great trick, and I am all for it as long as you're going fast enough to use your trill fingering there. So even when you're playing A's and B's and C sharps, you leave this finger down and that is so great for stability. When you can do it, when you can get away with it, I'm all for leaving fingers down for stability. Only if it changes pitch or something do we want to avoid that. A couple of other interesting things about this etude that I want to mention. One is, once again, there's a little connection to etude number 12, the etude that we just finished. That etude was at eighth note equals 168 in 6-8, and here we are at quarter note equals 168 in 4-4. So the pulse actually stays the same. And there are places in this etude 13 that Altez specifies to double tongue. Of course, I chuckle because you'd have to have a phenomenal single tongue to do it single tongued and really beautifully. But so you have this double tonguing in number 13 that is actually 
exactly the same speed as what we just did in number 12. It's much easier because there's much less of it, but he's taking what he had you do in number 12 and putting a little taste of it here in 13 as a little connection. The other thing I want to mention is that he's made the beginning quite rhythmically interesting. It actually sounds like the beginning might as well be the downbeat. It might as well be da 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 and you actually have to be careful to make sure it does not sound like that. He's written that as a pickup, as an upbeat. I'm sure that's for the energy that he wants you to aim for the middle of that gesture. The best way to practice that and make sure that you're conceptualizing it that way and that you're helping your audience, your teacher hear it that way as well is to put the metronome on half notes sometimes so that you're not going along da 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 but you're doing da 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 dum ba 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 da 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 dum da 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 one more thing i'll mention since we're all musicians here and i get a kick out of this on the second page where you're told to leave your right hand second finger down you also have a dolce I just think that's a very typical musician thing. We've just got to the section that sounds like a circus trick, like listen to what I can do, but we're gonna be all sweet about it. Like, oh, for me, it is nothing. For me, it is so easy to do this. <laughs> and so I'd just be sure you really play that dolce. Don't let it sound like hard work. You'll be working hard, but we don't want to know about it. We just wanna think that it's very sweet. And one other expressive marking, that you should know on the first page when you get to the low C sharp fortissimo, it says con fuoco. Every musician must know what con fuoco means. If you don't, your training as a musician is certainly not complete. So what does con fuoco mean? Do you know what it means? <laughs> <laughs>